first of all, I just want to say to Kyle, like, I'm really proud of you for talking about that because he's never shared that on camera before. down a bit and uh, <laughs> and we'll go for it whoa yes we have success okay we're good hello the friends hey guys Nicole and sassy reporting for duty <laughs> so the friends we've been getting a lot of questions about emotional eating lately both of us have struggled with emotional eating in the past and we've been asked to tell our story and also how we deal with it and what is it. So we're gonna go through all of that in this video and tell you a bit of our struggle and then tell you how we healed from it. And uh, yeah, like Nicole said, a lot of people have been asking like, how do you actually know if you have emotional eating? And like she said, what is it? Well, we're not doctors or therapists or anything like that. This is just our experience. And being on a censored platform like YouTube, it is, kind of hard to explain that's why we're saying emotional eating today because no one will see this video if we call it what it really is but i'm sure you guys can figure it out as we go along and talk about it today so yeah what emotional eating means for us is that we used food as medication we used food to cope much like somebody might use a substance or an adult beverage for coping you know what the medical terms or clinical terms for those are we used food as our medication and this could be like stress it could be anxiety it could be depression but also when we were stuck in our emotional in the worst part of our emotional eating we would do it in celebrations so we would yeah. use really any excuse to eat more than we wanted to we were we felt like we we it was out of our control how much we were intaking in food every day got us up to a very unhealthy weight for me almost 400 pounds and for nicole almost 300 pounds yes and so basically any emotion we didn't want to deal with it so we ate the emotions instead of dealing with it we hid behind the food and it started for us both very very young so we'll take you back there and then go to where we reached our heaviest weight and we'll tell you why we needed to change um, it started for me when I was really young my parents divorced and I was going back and forth between two different households and both households had totally different ideas about how much food you were supposed to eat one house was my mom's house and it was you eat enough but not too much and then my Italian dad and Nona's house was you keep eating keep eating all the time to where I would be hungry at my mom's because it wasn't enough food but then at my Nona's and my dad's I would want to go and play I'd be full but I would actually be made to sit at the table until I finished everything so I started developing a very unhealthy relationship with food and I didn't really know what was too much and what was too little and I also think I felt like I was out of, I didn't have any control because of all the trauma I was going through plus the two different ideas of food I started using the food as my only method to control something as a little girl not understanding and then from there it just kept going and I kept gaining weight because I kept using food my entire life and I also struggled with weight and then I reached my heaviest like Kyle said almost 300 pounds which was 275 pounds and my story is kind of similar to Nicole's where it started really young. My mom actually had a really bad case of emotional eating where me being like a five-year-old kid, I thought she was sick all the time. Like after meals, I thought she was, she had an, like a physical illness um, where she was, would get sick after every meal. So I'm trying to process that as a five-year-old boy and that led to me being very, body conscious because I figured I was pretty smart like I'm not that smart but I was pretty smart to figure out that it was to do with the body and weight and I started emotionally eating very very young and I just knew I was taught this is not like to blame our parents or whatever they did the yeah. best they could 
Um, yeah. Like everyone hears that from their parents, like they, they did the best they could and we really do believe that. Um, yeah, we don't blame anybody. Yeah, this is not a blame video, it's just to help maybe someone out there that's struggling with similar upbringings where we learned like you have to deal with the past trauma before you mm -hmm. can move on, let go of the emotional eating, be okay to be around food and that, but we'll get to that. But anyways, it started when I was about five. I noticed myself gaining weight and like Nicole's family, my grandma's house was eat, eat, eat all the time. At my own house where I grew up, it was you should never eat ever. Eating's bad, you'll get fat, and being fat is bad. So that's kind of how it started with me and I was put on slim fast and liquid diets by my mom when I was eight or nine years old, I believe it started. And from there, gained weight all through my teen, adolescent years, teenage years, and developed type two diabetes, uh, I think in my early 30s, and reached almost 400 pounds. First of all, I just wanna say to Kyle, like, I'm really proud of you for talking about that because he's never shared that on camera before. And it was really important that we do that, that he shared, that I share our struggle because there is always a point that we found that it stems from. And of course we aren't blaming anybody. We take full responsibility for using the food to cope. Now that but, we're adults, like, yes. we realize, yeah, we, we have to take the responsibility and stop blaming or else we would have never got over our emotional eating. Exactly. But as children, that's kind of how it started. And then until we were full adults, we didn't really realize it until Kyle developed type two diabetes. I had developed sleep apnea to the point where I was stopping breathing seven times a night and partially stopping breathing 84 times a night. I needed a sleep apnea machine to help me breathe at night. We feel like too, on YouTube, there's not very many channels that deal with this subject. And no. part of it is you're not allowed to, like yeah. you, you won't make any ad revenue if you say the words. And also worse than that, you can't help anybody if no one can see your video. So the algorithm yeah. buries helpful videos and won't show it. pushes videos that promote emotional eating like mukbangs and um, you know eating challenges and all that stuff. We're not against, everyone can do whatever they want, but mm -hmm. it's just, that's what we're up against. But we feel like it's important enough to talk about today. Um, because we talk to so many people and we see so many comments every day blaming the food. Yeah. And emotional eating, me and Nicole learned, has nothing to do with the food. It's very little to do with the food, actually. It's actually, when I started to heal from the emotional eating, I bought a book called It's Not About Food. And that's where I really started realizing it had nothing to do with the food. I was overeating but it was because I didn't want to deal with a lot of stuff. So anytime I had a bad day, I was happy, I was sad, bored, angry, tired, I turned to food because it allowed me to hide and not actually work through the emotions. And even when I was happy, I used it to celebrate too, which isn't a bad thing, but the way I was doing it was actually hurting my body. And I, I don't, uh, go on camera a lot of times, but I felt like this video was important because a lot of couples watch our channel and I know it's like a secret thing in guy circles that you're not supposed to talk about emotional eating and so many guys have it. Yes, a lot. Like so many guys, it, it, both have it. Girls and guys, ha everyone has it. There's a lot of people that have it out there that aren't feel like they're not allowed to talk about it. That's why I wanted to share it because it's it's insane, but it's becoming common to have emotional eating nowadays. So it really is. And again, this platform does not allow these types of videos to be seen. So it's very hard for people to know what it is and know if they have it because you're not really allowed to share information about it. So this is why we're doing it. And it's very important. And I learned that too when I was getting help for the emotional eating, I would go to group meetings and there were only a couple of guys at each meeting. And um, I always learned there were way more, but only a couple would get help because they were embarrassed or afraid to admit it. So yes, we're trying to spread this message out to everyone 
and what happened was we would use the food to cope we would do it in private we would hide do it in our own home we neither of us would eat food in public we would wait until we were alone even after my my emotional eating recovery meetings i would go in my car and eat to cope with the fact that i had been working through stuff so it was um a cycle where we would try to fix it but we would do it in the in fad diets try to lose the weight and then the weight the cycle kept going and going and going and then we both reached our heaviest weight we had the massive medical problems but my sleep apnea didn't trigger me to want to get help even though that was super serious it was Kyle's type 2 diabetes diagnosis that really scared both of us into going okay like if if we don't start changing we might not wake up and if, you know? if anyone out there, if you guys suspect you might have emotional eating, talk to a professional, talk to somebody, get it out there. It's not, it shouldn't be a secret. You shouldn't feel bad about it. Um, me and Nicole are here for you. Leave it yes. in the comments. Even if we can't get back to you, leave it. Um, we're here. Our, we're, like, we're not experts, but our definition of like emotional eating is not being able to control yourself around food. Right. For years, we couldn't have it in the house. We, um, if we opened a box of cookies or a bag of chips or ice cream, we had to eat the whole thing. And also like um, it would be a, an incredibly large amount of food in a very short period of time that it would be consumed to the point where I would almost be physically sick. And you, it's, and it doesn't feel good. Like you're not in control. No. You're not like saying, oh, I'll enjoy some dessert. It's, no, it's you like start you, and you can't stop. And it's very, autopilot. yeah, and it doesn't make you feel good after. And that's what was happening to me and Nicole for a lot of years. And I think now we'll give, kind of shift over into how did we deal with it? How did we fix it? Well, first, because we were dealing with massive health problems, we knew we had to start losing weight before we could address the emotional stuff. So the first thing we did was we tried to find small changes that would be sustainable, sustainable because everything we had done in the past just failed. So we started to do portion control, which was we didn't change what we were eating, just how much. We started measuring our food out and using the serving sizes on the backs of packages. And it did, it's not smooth in the beginning, but we did our best. And instead of a bag of chips at night for a snack, we would have a bowl. And we did things like that. Then as we were measuring our food out, eating less and losing the weight and our health was getting back to uh, a safe place I guess um a healthier place then we started to actually work on the emotional eating yeah because before like we were saying we were blaming food so we'd blame carbs we'd blame chocolate cake take that all away and yeah. it would backfire and we'd end up eating more and gaining more weight yeah. getting more unhealthy and so the emotional eating would kind of hide under blaming food yes and so uh, we didn't change the food. We just said, let's eat a little bit less because the fad diets were definitely not working. No, so once we did that balanced diet in portion, then we did this. We made signs. Signs that said, are you actually hungry? And we put them up everywhere yeah, that like, we would eat. Like literal signs, like stick, Real signs. stick them on the fridge, stick them in the bathroom, yes. everywhere. Marker, I took signs, I decorated them, I made them really big with bright colors. Everywhere that we would eat, I put them. One in the car, at our placemats, on the cupboard, on the fridge, in the mirror, in the bathroom. Everywhere that we would go, that we would see them or possibly be eating, we put them. That stopped us. So when we went to go get food, the first question we would say is, are you actually hungry? So if I was actually hungry or we were actually hungry, we would give ourselves a snack and we always had snacks portioned and ready to go if that was actually the case. Most of the time though, my answer was no. So then I had another question underneath that said, why are you going to eat the food? Why do you want the food? And then I would go through, am I hungry? Or sorry, I would go through, am I tired? Did I have a bad day? Is there trauma from the past coming up that I need to deal with? Am I happy, sad? Then once I figured out the emotion, I would go, okay, what else can I do instead of eat right now? And I have a list that I actually wrote out 
that I would stick on the fridge. And this is an actual, one of the actual lists. I don't know if they can see that. That I used. Um, some of the things on it. Things to do instead of eat. Do my nails. Go for a walk. Write. Play computer games. At the time I played computer games. Uh, talk it out with Kyle. Play with Hank, who was our dog at the time. Read. And once I did one of those things to distract myself, then when I was done that activity, I would go back to the emotion because I needed the emotion to sort of be a little less strong at that point. Then I could go in and deal with whatever it was. And that really helped. I had to keep practicing. I had to keep asking the question over and over, but eventually both of us, it worked. Having the signs, asking the question, and now we have amazing relationships with food. We can keep food in the house. We can keep treats in the house. You know, we like, can listen to our bodies. Yeah, I, I think it's like, you see the end result with a lot of social media influencers. Like they might've lost the weight like me and Nicole, or they're in really good shape, but it doesn't mean it was always like that. And it doesn't mean it was quick. So don't feel bad if you've been struggling with this for a long time. For me, Nicole, it, time. it it's like we've kept the weight off for over six years now, but this started like we were saying when we were kids. So it's been decades and that's okay too. It takes as long as it takes. Um, and I did seek professional help as well. And please, like Kyle said before, please do that if you think you have this and you have a really good point. Oh yeah, I remember, I'm not sure where it was from. It might have been from that book. Um, I think it's from that book. Uh, it's not about food book. Yeah. There's a kind of a, a quote that's stuck in both me and Nicole's head that is the, the reason behind why we're doing this video and that secrets keep you sick. And that's why the literal putting up signs all over the house or talking it out between each other asking each other the questions, asking ourselves the questions. Are you really hungry? What's your motivation? What's the emotion behind you wanting to eat right now? Yeah. And we want to tell you guys that don't keep it a secret. There's nothing to be ashamed about. A lot of people struggle with this and a lot of your favorite YouTubers have struggled with this or are struggling with this right now. Yeah. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. Leave it down in the comments. If you're having a rough time, if you're having a good time, if you if you found out um, some strategies that work for you and we can all help each other and that's really why we wanted to do this video together on camera and have a more serious talk about this because it's important, it's an important part of a weight loss journey if you're trying to lose weight, if you wanna lose weight, but just overall health and mental health and so thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys so much know that we love you we know what it's like it takes time but you can heal from this and we're here for you and just one day at a time that's it one day it all goes in stages like we didn't we didn't when we were falling back we would try to skip steps um we try to fast forward our results um, sometimes we would be like, oh, we're okay to have food in the house. And then we'd realize, no, we're not. No, as soon as not. we opened the package, it was like causing problems either here or with overeating. And it's okay, it's all okay. to go back and go, okay, I need to be, I need to get the food out of the house now again. I'm not doing good and that's okay too. You can be self-aware and kind of look at it, watch it more and yeah there's no mistakes just learning curves guys one thing at a time we love you so much okay the friends thanks so much for watching we love you very much got all the links down below for the things click all the links click all the links and kiss it <laughs> bye guys See ya. love you remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale it's also about here and here heart and mindset bite through it you can do it don't give